Hello everyone, welcome back with Afro in Action. I'm Augustine. First, we want to take the time to thank you guys for the love and the support we have been getting on our page and also the love you have been showing to our entrepreneurs. We are very appreciated and we have so many more coming your way. Today, African Action has the honor to meet with Steve Sunke, an aspiring African designer. Steve Sunke is actually the co-founder of Black Gold which is a blend of works in contemporary clothing industry in order to promote African style and also culture. So today, uh, Steve Sunke, welcome to African Action. Thanks, thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we're very happy to have you and we know the schedule is very uh, hard, so to take the time out to talk to us is actually very appreciated. Problem. So uh, would you actually take the time to introduce yourself to us and to the public? Uh, well, first of all, um, as I said, uh, I want to first thank you guys for for having me. Um, it's a privilege for me, you know. Um, I, I don't think there's any entrepreneur out there who wouldn't want to be in my position right now, you know, and especially for an aspiring one like me who just started. So uh, it's my pleasure, and uh, I I really encourage you know the the, the the initiative, you know, just keep it going. So who am I? Um, my name is um, Steve. Kamgang Sunke. Um, the Kamgang is the from the Bandike region. If for those who know who know about it, um, well, I am a young Cameroonian. Um, it will be thirty in October. Um, I just I got into I came to the US about six years ago in two thousand and nine, um, and I came for opportunity like every African, you know, African immigrant. And yeah, so so far I you know I have been through ups and downs like everybody. You know, went to school, um, uh, have a job. Um, I you know I have my own place, mm -hmm. and I live by myself. Just you know trying to pay you know pay bills and have a paycheck. So you know, yeah, but now uh, thank God now I you know I have a clothing line um, that uh, I just launched, uh, and it's Black Gold. Um, so I I think. My presence here today is to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much um, you know, just a brief of me. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you talk about you coming from Cameroon to here. Did you uh, go to school in Cameroon? Yes, I did go to school. Actually, most of my academic, um, like I would say, career is not no really My academic um, journey. path, yeah, journey, yeah, actually. Um, was in Cameroon, mm -hmm. so uh, I went to all the way to to high school. I that's actually when I had my GED that I moved. I moved over here, so yeah, I went to school in Cameroon. Okay, so when you moved here after getting your GED, mm -hmm. did you continue with school? I did. I did continue. Actually, that that was the main the main purpose. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, what did you study? I actually. In the beginning, I was coming to be a doctor. I have to be honest. Of course. <laughs> that was, you know, the, the big picture in the beginning, right? Everybody comes with a big dream, right? Mm -hmm. So my own dream was, I mean, it's, it's still, you know, I'm not really, I didn't really give up, you know, just that things have changed a little bit, you know. Okay. Yeah. So I was coming in to be a doctor, and I was uh, at the point I was like, I don't know, I'll be a nurse and stuff, you know. But I ended up doing um, medical sonography. Mm -hmm. So, which is um, the field in which I had my bachelor degrees, um, okay. yeah, from the from Montgomery College in Maryland, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's where I am right now, and I'm so far I'm trying to get into a career. Uh, like I did some couple of applications from left to right, you know. But in the meantime, you know, I decided to jump into into business and have my own personal independent source of you know of income. Okay. Yeah. So. So, uh, so right now you're working as a medical sonographer. I'm not working as a medical personal lab. I am aspiring to get a job into you know into the field, but I have a degree in the field. Okay. Yeah, so the the jobs I'm do, I'm doing now is has nothing to do with medical sonography yet. Yeah, but I'm actually looking into that because I just it? I just graduated like last year. Okay, yeah, so, so whatever you do, that does it has anything to do with medical? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Actually, I I work with these disabled kids. Okay. Uh, it's not per se medical, you know, like deep, deeply medical, but you know, a couple of like taking pressure, or, mm -hmm. you know, giving medication and stuff, you know, so it's a little bit in the, in the same domain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
So. Okay. So, uh, we pretty much covered your education and also your career. So, how does it go? How can um, an aspiring medical sonograph go, goes from being uh, wanting to become a doctor to becoming a, a fashion designer? How did you relate those two? Wow. Well, it's America, right? Right. The <laughs> I mean, <of> dreams. <laughs> it's you know. I, I I think I can assure you there's a lot of people out there who can relate to my you know to what to of what course. I'm going to say right now. You know, it's not always the straight line. You know, path yeah. like everybody believes it's, it is. But well, mine is a little bit like before I actually got here. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always had a lifestyle of living by myself. Actually, I became independent very young. You know, um, I went to a couple of boarding schools back in, in Cameroon. Okay. Um, I mean, like boarding schools, like I used to live in school, you know, yeah. So I actually got detached from my parents very early. Okay. Yeah, so like 15, 16, I was by myself. Away. So I kind of grew up in that kind of lifestyle, you know, and yeah, lifestyle. trying to handle, handle things by myself, you know, and create, just being creative, surviving, mm -hmm. you know. So when I got here, um, even though I had aspirations and I had dreams, you know, um, the way things unfolded, you know, like uh, responsibility, paying bills and everything, you know, got me to thinking otherwise, you know, because, you know, entering to me into the medical field is not that easy, you know, it's yeah. love, you know, and you need to have money and everything. So eventually I, I diverted to something else, you know, but I always told myself, um, there's something I have to do to be independent, you know. Okay. Yeah. So it was all all this why it was about. Okay, even though I'm going to school and I, you know, I I, I need degrees to make the money, mm -hmm. I need to do something that's gonna be like, like, a, how can I say, like a backup. Okay. You know, like, yeah. So I, that's where you know the, the whole idea of black gold came about. It's something I've been thinking about in long, you know, very very long time. Okay. And thank God today, you know, I actually came up with something. Okay. Yeah. So that's how I diverted from the whole medical thing to so what I'm doing now. Okay. Yeah. But I have to mention that black gold is not like what I want to be as per se, you know, okay. like my dream my dream um, job or something, you know. Okay. It's just me being independent, me, me having something that's just for me and that I can rely on in case something else happens, you know, like that's it, yeah. So you do still, um, you will continue to have your job? Of course, I will, yeah. So, talking about Black Gold, why the name Black Gold? Why is the name Black Gold? That's a good, that's a good question. <laughs> Actually, it's the first time I have to answer that question. Okay. Um, well, initially, when I when we sat down with um, with my with the co-founder, okay. uh, actually, I didn't mention her, Lowell Maeva. Ma mm -hmm. Yeah, she is. Uh, she lives in New Mexico. Um, we sat together with uh, one friend of mine, and we were thinking about a name because the idea was there already. We had okay. everything. Oh, we want to do this and that, but what's the name then? And we had a web designer, uh, some the person who was supposed to build up our website, mm -hmm. and he doesn't really live here. He's in Algeria. Okay. Yeah. So we. He was like, well, um, we, you have to come up with a name that actually talks about your Africa. And when we, we think about Africa, the first thing is, you know, black. You know, like, well, it's, it's true we have some countries that are not, but technically, you know, it's, that's where, you know, all, all African Americans, everybody came from. That's the origin of the black skin and everything. Mm -hmm. So the black part of it is like, so where we, we are, what we are what we represent, you know, um, our image, you know, as Africans. And the gold is the boldness, the, the toughness, you know, like, okay, um, we are African and we are strong, you know, and we can impose ourselves. That's okay. why the gold, you know, gold is precious okay. and it's hard to get, you know, technically that's why the, 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 the name came from. from. Yeah. Okay. That's a very uh, interesting approach yeah. <laughs> and a very interesting name. Okay, so it's very interesting to choose a name has black gold. So it's, it's unique. So, and I want a thing that we, I wanted to ask you, that you, you, on your website, you stated that you're trying to represent, the, to promote African style and culture. In which way is black gold promoting African style and culture? Well, it's very, um, it's very, very simple. Well, um, we are, as you can tell already, I mean, from my, you know, outfit, we use 
of the African fabric that okay. we call wax, you know. Um, but we didn't want to, like, you just totally use the, you or like, uh, produce or, um, like, design our clothes just with the African fabric. Mm -hmm. That would be, like, too obvious because, you know, that would be like, oh, it's just for Africans and stuff. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do, actually, the vision is not to, is not to sell the African fabric or the African um, 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 print or whatever it is, but the vision is to introduce the, the, the style, the African style, in other uh, clothing yeah, cl cultures, you know, mm -hmm. like a kind of unity of, of style and, and culture, because if you look very well, we are always trying to copy from other, you know, all these um, big pants, mm -hmm. you know, girls especially, always trying to copy what Beyonce wears and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. How about us, you know, getting to that point where, okay, pe all the people are also going to be like, oh, well, Beyonce has a t-shirt, but there's an African stuff, you know, there's a, there's a, you know, there's a fabric on it that I don't know, well, mm -hmm. it looks nice, and people start wearing it too, you know, so we're just trying to put the African style, the African um, uh, clothing style out there, you know, in the major, you know, contemporary uh, world, where everybody can actually see how it fits with all the other stuff, that, mm -hmm. because the vision, we, we, we thought, okay, the vision people have of African clothing now is just the big boo-boos, and you know, with dashi case, and yeah, but we wanted to give another figure, another face to it. Like tell people, okay, well, that's the African fabric, you know, but it can it can also be seen in another way. It can also be mixed up with a t-shirt or a shirt, you know, and look good, still look good, and but still keeping the African, you know, yeah. culture in it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So yeah, that's where it. black gold comes in. Yeah. Okay. Actually. So uh, something like you mentioned dashi mm -hmm. it's actually it seems to be a very well. Uh, accepted brand because okay. many people have been wearing it. How do you, uh, what, how are you going to get people to be attracted to black gold? How are you going to be like, you know what, this is also an African print, but it's not just an African print, it's a, an international print. Okay. It speaks for Africa, but it will represent anyone who wants to wear just a polo. Yeah. So, how are you going to make somebody not buy? Uh, Ralph Lauren, Ralph and buy black gold. Uh, that's a good question. Well, that's the, I don't know. That's the question we actually asked ourselves in the beginning, because you know we didn't we didn't just come up with the with the you know with the idea and uh -huh. we just started you know pushing it forward. We actually thought about it. Um, well, um, the thing is, what we're doing, you know, we are actually not trying to make people feel like okay it's just for africans or it's just for maybe a particular country or cameroonians mm -hmm. you know so we we live in the modern world right now and marketing doesn't always have to be That's from door to door or going to the market and putting you know you can sit in your house and you sell way more than somebody who is who is who has a store you know what I mean? so that's exactly the kind of approach we're trying to hit on mm -hmm. for now that we just started and we're kind of limited in a lot of you know aspects you know but you know in the long run obviously we're gonna have stores and you know but for now we are going to be we use mostly social media and stuff to promote to put it out there and if you've looked at the website and the pictures uh, we've been posting on on our promotional sites and everything we don't we don't we use only African models or you know but, yeah, yeah. No, we try to mix a lot you know, just to make other people feel like oh okay I, you I, know, I can put it on too you know oh it looks nice on that girl she's not even African you know or on that boy you know mm -hmm. so that's the way we try to put it you know in that out there in that way but initially um we want it to be like first of all an African pr pride you yes. know like okay yeah Africans who first first of all feel like oh well even though that other person who is not African is wearing it this is our stuff, you know, this is, it comes from, like, what's when somebody wears Nike or Adidas or Tommy Hilfiger, mm -hmm. well, everybody knows it's, it's a nice brand and everything, but people all already know it's an American brand. It's not African, even though Africans wear it and they're proud of it, you know. So that's the way we want to put it out there. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. Yeah. Uh, something that I do want to ask you, like, you just, you are very new on the market. How are you planning to compete with who, every other designer, African designer who has been on the market for a while? Something like that, Shiki, they've been there and people are wearing it and for some reason it actually just came back again. So how are you planning to stand, stand 
fucked up and be unique in front of those kind of uh, designs. Yeah, competitors. Um, we're not out there to compete with anybody. Mm -hmm. That's the we we knew already people are doing what we're doing already. You know, okay. there's some and. I've actually, before I actually came up with the idea of black gold, I've worn you know, some clothes made in the same kind of idea, you know. Mm -hmm. But if anybody, if any entrepreneur out there, if any, if let's say Steve Jobs wanted to think, okay, well, I can't build up my software because maybe, uh, uh, who's the guy again? Um, uh, Bill Gates did his already. He wouldn't, he wouldn't, you know, he would be like, okay, well, I can't because somebody else did it already. You know, sure. so it's all about innovation, bringing in something that others don't, haven't done yet, or you know, even though they're out there, we want to be to move in together, push forward the African culture mm -hmm. together. We, we're not competing with anybody. We know that people out there who do that already, but we want to bring a little bit another touch that makes it look makes it even better than what they did already. And in our own situation, our own case, we wanted to look to touch more into the design. And if you look closely. Our designer are unique, you know, and yeah, and we want to. Most people who do this, if you look very closely, you're going to realize they do it in the form of, um, how can I say, promotional stuff, like maybe they're raising money to do something or stuff like that. We want to make a brand. That's what makes it, the makes the first difference. We want to make a brand. It's less about money. It's mostly about having imposing myself in a particular industry, in a particular field, you know. Yeah, and eventually the money is going to come up, obviously. But we felt we first want to, um, like, I can I say, create an image, create a name, yeah, yeah. Sure. a brand, a name. So that's it. And that's why we started big, you know, like, not just going ahead and selling. We wanted to have our website, mm -hmm. a brand, you know, a particular type of design, you know, and style, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So basically, that's how we, you know, we plan to actually distinguish ourselves from others by being professional and by just you know putting forward the brand, not really just setting out there for the money. Okay. Yeah. All right. So since you guys just started, yeah. you guys brand new, and how was it when it when it comes to dealing with the regulations to start a business? Mm -hmm. How did you handle those regulations, government-wise? Uh, uh, securing black gold to be uh, yours. So how did you deal with that? Um, it was pretty easy. Um, I don't think there was. We, don't, we live in a country of uh, uh, if we say capitalism. Oh yes. Yeah, capitalist country. Like we, you know, it's very easy to come up with something here, and when you have the means to, the money to put it forward, you can make it happen. We, we, we live in a country of opportunity. Um, the law part of it wasn't really tough. I would I would say um, I didn't really go through a lot of you know obstacles. Actually, not. I just went through the normal procedure. I uh, went to the IRS. You know, um, uh, subscribed my company, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, so far so good. I think probably it's maybe because we just started. Uh, obviously, there's gonna be some other stuff coming up as we grow. You know, uh, maybe. Uh, in terms of legalization and licensing and everything because mm -hmm. I, I guess when you get bigger pro the issues we have now is not the same issues maybe Nike or you know I don't know who said but we really don't you know we, have to we don't have the same problems right now <laughs> so probably when the more we grow up the more we're going to encounter but for now I don't think we had anything major as so far as the law and enforcement you know, is concerned yeah okay so being an aspiring entrepreneur uh, and you, you did mention that you have a partner, Maeva Laurel. Is it easy to work with someone? Is it easy? Yeah. Um, it's easy um, when you when you can uh, come to the same point, like mid in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it becomes easy, but obviously, That's gonna be two people wouldn't always always have the same point of view. Sure. But. Uh, when you look at it on the positive side, that's also what makes the business, uh, what makes you guys grow. Because if everybody was coming in with the same idea, nobody would, you know, nothing new would come out of it. You know, so sometimes there are some, you know, disagreements, mm -hmm. but uh, in a positive way, in a productive way. So yeah, it's pretty. I, I really enjoy working with um, with her. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, we're looking forward to do great things together. Okay. Yeah. That's that's good. Yeah. Yeah. And has uh, Afro in Action 
main purpose mm -hmm. is to promote successful stories mm -hmm. by Africans for Africans. That's pretty much what African action stand for. So as an entrepreneur, you just started. How did you deal? Did you encounter any critics from either your friends, your family, or did anybody ever pretty much tell you that you are not going anywhere with this idea? Oh yeah. Well, uh, any entrepreneur would tell you a story about you know that kind of you know situation. Um, I, I'm not an exception. You know, I've gone, I've had people telling me stuff, but I, I usually don't like focusing on it. You know, mm -hmm. because um, even though some of them are really constructive criticism, you know, things that can help. Sure. Yeah, but um, I, I've, I've got to a point where I've, I've, I've had a lot of experience living by myself and trying to do things by myself that mm -hmm. I know how to distinguish which one, what critic can help me mm -hmm. and what, what critic is just there to, you know, just to make you be confused or something, okay. you know. So, yeah, I've had people tell me, you know, well, uh, it's too expensive, uh, you know, uh, well, you're doing this, people are doing that already, it's not going to work, you know, but it's part of, you know, our community, it's part of life, it's, you know, I was expect, I, was, I expect that, and I've, I've also been through a situation where I've seen somebody do something and I had something to say about it, you know, so when I put myself in that situation, in that shoe, I understand where they come from, mm -hmm. so, you know, I can't, but it's, it's okay. Uh, it's it's uh, nice that you do think positive and you take the critics that you receive as constructive the things to build you up. But sometimes if somebody might come to you and say something negative without knowing that they're actually helping your growth. Sure. So it's good for you. I'm very applauding you for taking it that way. Well That's the only way any entrepreneurs can actually grow in this world. Yeah. So another question that I have for you, you mentioned your age earlier. Do you believe that it will be easier for someone to start uh, at a younger age or do you think you can start your business at any age as long as you have the inspiration and the dedication? Oh my God, age? I, I've even never thought about my age as a factor, you know. Mm -hmm. um, well, I have to really give, give some credit to America because Back home, where I come, I mean, you can relate to that. We in Africa mostly we have that uh, upbringing of age is the matter of whatever you can do in life. You know, like at a certain age, it's too late to do certain things. You know, and we grew. Most of us we grew up with that. Me, you know, me included. But when I got here, I had another percep perception of life. You know, like well. You can pretty much do whatever you want at whatever age you want to do it. Sure. Or, you know, it doesn't matter. But it, all, all what matters is how you feel about what you're doing. You know, okay. like what it brings to you in a, in a personal um, point of view, like okay. how you feel about it. So that's how I actually approach uh, whatever I want to do in life. You know, so my age, I've even never like. Sometimes I do forget. Like I'm like, oh, I'm 29. You know, because <laughs> it's not really what I'm out for. I'm not really out to. If I want to do something. My age doesn't come first in that. What comes first is how I, how do I feel about it? Mm -hmm. You know, how is it gonna make me feel as a person? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's how I see it. I don't think age. Anybody who wants to get into something, when you put age into it, it limits your ability. Okay, you yeah, mean. yeah. Because you tell yourself, oh well, if I don't, it either puts pressure on you or it makes you not think the way you should, you should be thinking. Alright, so I know uh, we mentioned your age and I'm glad that you do see that America is like a country of opportunities where anything can happen at any age as long as you have dedication. So it's, it's a na very nice way to view things. Previous entrepreneurs have uh, mentioned that it's always good to start young because that's how you get to make your mistakes and you get to learn and by the time you're a little older you already have some kind of experience and you know what not to do so but it's good to have different perspective so i'm not uh, let's switch to a positive side of this interview so you have you launched your product yeah and yeah. when was the launching um the houston event of uh, war people on Facebook, okay. yeah, it's a group of you know Cameroonians. Mm -hmm. um, well, I wish we had, we could, you know, we could have a, a more meaningful, you know, launching, Lunch. maybe like an event or a personal. But you know, we financial limitations, you know, because mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but it was pretty much where we launched our product. You know, they had an event in Houston, mm -hmm. Texas, and um, that was like about I don't know three weeks ago or so, okay. of a month ago. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we just took advantage of that, and we had a little bit of uh, one show uh, happening there, and you know, just introduce um, introduce the brand over there. So you had models wearing the Prada and yeah. doing the runway. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So uh, that was good. Fun. No, we did it in the Af African style, you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, that's that's good. So and and when did you introduce your product to the to the media, social media? Um, we did that um a few weeks ago as well. I mean, just immediately after they came back from uh, from Houston after the Houston launching, um, we did a Facebook uh, launch. Uh, we created a page. Uh, uh, it was pretty much just um, social media, um, a whole social media thing, because the the sales actually is online sales. Mm -hmm. We don't have a store, mm -hmm. so it it was more appropriate to do a, an online launching rather okay. than yeah an event. You know, at least anybody who clicks on it can go directly and buy if he's interested. Okay. You know, but we probably gonna do another event or maybe yes. launching when we start selling in stores. Mm -hmm. um, not now, but in the near future. Okay. Yeah, but that's pretty much how we did so far with the launching. You know. And since the launching, have your sales improved? We are progressing, okay. if I would say so. Yeah, because um, we we are learning learning too from the process. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't go to school to be a fashion designer. You know, True. yeah, none of us went. With my co-founder, she knows nothing. So we just jumped into the sea and we're like, okay, okay we're gonna learn how to swim. Yeah. You know, so. We are still learning a lot of things. We started, uh, we discovered certain things we could have done differently. Mm -hmm. We're still discovering things we can do differently. Sure. Uh, but uh, the vision is there, okay. the belief is there. Um, I would say the uh, the inspiration is there too because the designs are made by us mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, so now we just try, we're just adjusting, you know, different where we, you know, we did wrong and how we can do it better. Mm -hmm. But it's progressing. We're having people buying, we're having people interested, even overseas, mm -hmm. you know, who are interested. Uh, we just need to work a little bit more on stuff like maybe delivery and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We're glad people like it. Okay. Yeah. So where do you see black gold in five years? Oh very far. Very far. Um I I look personally I'm a kind of person who uh I like sticking to what I believe in. Okay. And even before I got to where I am with Black Gold, um, mm -hmm. when I had the idea of Black Gold, I was already seeing myself launching it and having it done, mm -hmm. you know, and I did it. So Bla Black Gold in five, ten years, we see it as uh, a brand with three different uh, branches. Mm -hmm. Now it's called Black Gold USA. We plan to have a Black Gold Africa. Mm -hmm. We plan to have a Black Gold Europe. Sure. You know, so with each with its own um, um, uh, style, it, it, I don't know, and its own um, so design and everything. Yeah, so it's gonna be uh, for now. It's in the USA because that's where yeah. it's, it all started. Mm -hmm. That's where, this is where we had the opportunity to make it uh, to give birth to the brand. You know, but eventually as things goes on and we get more stable, we're gonna launch it in other continents okay. and have different branches. Yeah. So is Africa one of those continents? Of course, of course. Okay, yeah. So all right, that's good. Yeah. So um, one question that I did wanted to ask you is that black gold is that name you just I, I like the name <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Okay. So and we wish you a lot of success Thank with you, you and Maeva. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting that for you for some people to come out of nowhere and just decided that well we don't know anything about DC but we're gonna jump on it and survive. So yeah. it's very it's it's nice. Thank you. And one last thing is that like I told you earlier, we promote successful stories by Africans and for Africans as a young entrepreneur. What advice would you want to give to someone who wants to start a business? Like in general? In general. Uh, well uh First of all, you need to have a vision. Okay. I know the, um, there is nothing you can, uh, personally, from my personal point of view, I don't think there's anything you can actually achieve in life if you don't have a, a plan, mm -hmm. a plan of you know, life. Um, you don't have a, how do you call it again? Um, 
um, I forgot the name, but you need, you need to ha actually have a, a plan of attack, like mm -hmm. you just say, you know, you cannot just jump into something without, even if you didn't have a training, mm -hmm. you need to actually do some research and have a way of getting into what you want to do. Okay. So first of all, you need a vision, and the vision is what I call a plan, mm -hmm. because the vision comes by, you know, and it tells you exactly where you want to be and what exactly you want to do. That's okay. the first thing. Second thing, you need to believe in your vision. Okay. Yeah, believe. Um, comes with not uh, including external factors you know mm -hmm. like I, I talked about age area and stuff because um, those are kind of, kind of things if you really focus they might sometimes matter but if you want to focus on a lot of external factors like that you might get discouraged so you need to believe so to me it's vision uh, a belief and a dedication okay. yeah to whatever you want to do the rest are just stuff you can handle you know but those are the three major things to me okay. yeah I do appreciate your answers and your presence here on uh, Just Do With Afrin Action. Thank you too. So we yeah. very appreciate it. We wish you most of success. You and my Eva, you guys are standing up for what you believe in. The motto, where what you believe, also something that stands out. So uh, and so, I did want to ask you to explain that a little bit, if you mm -hmm. don't mind. Uh, well, before I jump into that, I also want to thank you guys uh, once more. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's likewise. Uh, just in your endeavor, you know, continue, you know, helping entrepreneurs, especially our Afri young Africans, because we need that. Okay. Um, where you believe, um, I like I've been explaining, you know, throughout the interview, uh, it's about sticking to what you, you know, you want to do, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but since we're talking about clothing, mm -hmm. we want like whenever you wear um, a black gold apparel, um, you know you're wearing something meaningful you know you're wearing something uh, that's carrying um, a message you know mm -hmm. that's carrying uh, an identity mm -hmm. uh, that's carrying uh, a culture mm -hmm. you know so you're wearing a, a belief on you okay. it's not just a clothing mm -hmm. you know so that's where the way you believe comes in okay. you know we need something that's gonna make you think mm -hmm. you know like so mm -hmm. where you believe what is it you know you want to know you know yeah so For sure. That's pretty much how it came about. All right. Uh, thank you again for coming to talk to us on your busy schedule. We appreciate your time. And everyone, thank you again for giving us the time to bring you Steve Sonke with Black Gold. Don't forget to visit, to visit, to visit us on Facebook and also on YouTube as at Afro in Action. We, will, we are here to answer any of your questions. If you have any questions for still, email us at afroinaction.com and also leave us a message on Facebook at Afro in Action. It was again Augustine. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.